where do I see the sport going in the next few years? That's a very fluid situation right now. Obviously, WWE will still be there. How will the roster change? I mean, the big thing right now, obviously, is All Elite Wrestling, uh, which is a new promotion ran by Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks. Oh, that has a lot of things going for it. A lot of things, a lot of stuff and things. How do I see the sport in the next few years? Very different than it is now. And, you know, a lot of people think, oh, this, it's, 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 it's the, the cop-out answer. But in the last five years, it's been WWE, Ring of Honor, maybe Impact Wrestling, if, and obviously New Japan in the last five years. But now with AEW and all, of course, you you add shows like uh, Major League Wrestling, which has carved out a niche for itself. It's a very interesting time to be a professional wrestling fan. Where do I see uh, wrestling in the next few years? Honestly, I have no idea. It Obviously, WWE, Ring of Honor, All Elite, New Japan, they will be, be around but what will be their, their capacity? What will be their, their, uh, their, their, their uh, for lack of better terms, what will be their position is very open now because of the addition of a new promotion promising big money payouts and the hype behind it as well. It depends on the success of a few of a few key shows, uh, not just for all all elite, but for other promotions including New Japan, which has their expansion going on currently honestly uh who knows it's a crapshoot but it's going to be exciting it's it's if if for nothing else it's a great time to be a professional wrestler and it's an awesome time to be a professional wrestling fan i would say you need to watch it if you have need, if you have never watched it before but it's one of those you can't go wrong with uh, with watching wrestling even if it is on monday night though if you do tune out because you're bored Eh, no big deal. One thing for sure, though, I think the sport will be just fine. Throughout this series, there's been a tacit acknowledgement of the fan bases of tabletop RPGs and professional wrestling aren't always compatible. While it could seem like a natural choice, both being about storytelling, there's a major issue. While wrestling fans can get by with a reasonable understanding of moves, storytelling, and so on, managing an entire cast or even a promotion on top of that isn't going to be as welcoming. Not impossible, but there's going to be a tighter door on the matter. To reference video games again, this is why I say general manager mode didn't last as long as the universe mode in the WWE games. Furthermore, each of the games covered so far in this series have had the assumption that the GM and players know a degree of detail regarding wrestling and or RPGs. But what about a game that assumes neither? Enter Worldwide Wrestling, not to be confused with Wild World Wrestling, an apocalypse-powered game that's operating under neither assumptions. How does it hold up? Let's find out. Worldwide Wrestling is probably the most professional looking of the games we've looked at in this series. Not to diminish the previous entries, but Worldwide takes as little assumption as possible. There's plenty of material to help both sides of the equation get into the book, and even several short essays on the way professional wrestling works. Our work isn't plentiful, but what is there serves only to keep things in focus. While I don't particularly care for how things are organized chapter-wise, coming across halfway like a game book, the quality is still there. Besides, most of these issues are tied to Apocalypse, and it won't be the first time I bring this up. As a final note, I'm not docking points for index issues, but rather for including a section about the infamous X card. Maybe I'll get into this in another time and amusing, but in the interest of time, let me just say that it irks me. Like most Apocalypse System games, character creation is rooted in the playbook or gimmick in this case. For Jaeger here, we'll be using the High Flyer playbook. This determines the spread of his four stats. Look, your it factor. Power, your strength and physicality. Real, your talent for breaking the fourth wall. And Work, your ability to perform in the ring. This makes Jaeger's stats to be Look plus one, Power minus two, Real minus one, and Work plus two, after adding the free point from the playbook and the move bonus from later. Second step is roll, the general alignment the wrestler has, which is face as it's been beforehand. Third step is heat, representing the audience response with your relationship with another wrestler. This is determined by answering one of the playbook's questions, and then ask the other questions to the other players, each one granting one heat with that wrestler. 
Finally, all baby faces take one heat with all wrestlers of the opposing alignment. For the purposes of this, we'll assume that Jaeger starts with two heat. Third is audience rating, which determines your momentum. As determined by the playbook, it's plus two for Jaeger, and thus he starts with one momentum. Lastly, moves, the actions that the wrestler can take. Jaeger starts with the basic moves, the face roll move, and the appropriate in ring moves. Further, he gains the finishing move from the high flyer gimmick and two move picks. We'll go with amazing athleticism and human highlight reel. Character creation here is fairly standard, but it's one of those things where you're either going to like or dislike how Apocalypse World handles its character creation. I'm not entirely a fan of how moves work in this compared to the previous games, but like I said, comparing this with the system that it uses is going to be a bit of a theme throughout this. Wild World uses a 2d6 system, modified by one of the five stats as determined by the move used. After calculating the modifier, a 6 or less is a botch, a 7 to 9 is a partial hit, and a 10 or higher is a full hit. Momentum is the game's extra effort mechanic, and spending 1 point grants a plus 1 bonus to a roll. This resets between scenes, but every move can change audience and or momentum potentially. There isn't a whole lot else to say mechanically, because gameplay in Worldwide is narrative-based and not rooted in the usual amount of detail. The majority of the moves have situational effects and every aspect is treated broadly. Moreover, it's interested in presenting a series of bullet points instead of the typical structure for a role-playing game. To some, this is a deal-breaker, but I think it's a matter of taking it on its own terms. Apocalypse World and its derivatives could very well be argued to be more of a co-op version of a game book than a role-playing game. I don't quite agree with that, because some of that could apply to most story games, but Wild World Wrestling is very much in that vein of a story game. And being that carries a double-edged sword. On one hand, it's easy to get things across without being buried in minutia. On the other, the game is undeniably restrictive with jobs instead of roles. The big problem with story games is that they spend so much time with the narrative aspects, the mechanics are pushed to the backside in a Mother May I fashion. While this could be argued about the last story game I reviewed, Bladebind, at least that game's dueling mechanic had enough depth to get players invested in how they build their characters. Given the biggest selling point of wrestling video games over the last decade is the degree of customization, with character creation and moveset editing, I feel like Worldwide is in a no-win scenario between trying to match up to that narrative standard while trying to give wrestling fans an appropriate sandbox. I noted at the start how it's written to try and approach both sides. It can't really please either side in this case. The narrative end of this equation prevents more detail, and the crunchy part of it is a poor fit for Apocalypse World's mechanics. While this may seem harsh, I'm not completely dismissing the game. It's an easy pickup, and I could see it being used at conventions or as a game with little setup like streamers. But that's as far as it goes. To that end, the only grade I'm comfortable giving this is Caution. It's not a bad game per se, just one that is going to have a much more narrow group. I would recommend its essays as a teaching tool for both sides, since that part clearly does help people to learn. Running it? Not so much. And with that, we conclude our brief look into mixing TRPGs and wrestling. While none of the games were bad, I'd say this is a genre that does not benefit from a narrative-centric style, in the same sense that the video games don't. This is a genre that's best treated as a sandbox, a canvas to build your style instead of emulating one presented to you. If I were to rank them personally from favorite to least favorite, it'd be Wild World and Squared Circle tied for first, as neither has enough of an advantage over the other, followed by Pile Drivers and Power Bombs for its simplicity in play, and lastly, Worldwide Wrestling. That said, I don't consider myself an authority on the matter and I openly invite anyone to try these games out for yourselves. But just remember as we head into the so-called Showcase of the Immortals, no matter how bad the show gets, you can do better. And with books like these and a few friends, you will. I guarantee it.